Greetings and welcome. We are so delighted. I mean, we just praise God for this evening, but we are just so delighted uh, for the occasion that brings us together. And so uh, while we're just uh, waiting for others to get on and to share, uh, we will we will uh, withhold um, our introduction until such time as we get um, those who are joining in with us. Uh, but we're going to be talking about uh, Life Compass, uh, Finding Your True North uh, with uh, Dr. Donna Hudson. And so uh, come on in and uh, join us because we are excited. We are just elated that we are having this opportunity to share. And of course, we are just grateful for uh, your uh, presence and your participation uh, in this evening. And uh, listen, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. And I hope that you will also uh, just join uh, in our efforts to reach out to somebody because, you know, we want we want as many as possible to uh, know about this. So if there's somebody that you can make a call to, uh, we want you to do that uh, immediately. You know, just start start reaching out so that um, uh, others can be involved as well. So we're we're pumping the brakes and uh, uh, slowing down so that we could um, make sure that we are um, giving time for as many to be on uh, as possible. So. So join in with us now, join in with us as we reach out to others, reach out to others. We want to get as many uh, involved in this as we possibly can. And, uh, and we want those of you who are coming on, you know, uh, to take the opportunity to uh, greet us in the chat. You know, let us know in the comment section that you are here because we want to uh, see your participation and we want to know that you are indeed with us and sharing in this experience on this evening. You know, and I, I, I told you, I'm, I'm just excited about um, all of this. And uh, this book discussion with uh, Dr. Donna Hudson is uh, just absolutely great. And we appreciate you. We appreciate you all uh, for being here and sharing uh, in this with us. So, uh, so come right on in, come right on in. We are, we are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. So come on in, come on in. And we want, we want uh, others of you. I see uh, my brother William Branch is here. And also I see Pastor Derek Arnold is here as well. And uh, we want to, um, we want to be sure that we are reaching out. We are reaching out and getting others uh, to share in with us. Dr. Hudson, are you there? Can you see me? I can't um, see you. Huh? I said, I can't see you. Okay. I I, I saw you for a moment there. Oh, oh there so we go. Want all right, we're going to do what we need to do to make this thing work. Can you see me now? Yeah, I see you. Oh, there you go. I see you too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, all right. Well, well and well and good. Well, um, we are, you know, we, we're just now uh, uh, slowing a little bit, as I call it, pumping on the brakes and giving a little time for uh, those who are joining in with us to get on board here. Uh, that's what uh, that's what this is all about. We are uh, we're just uh, hanging around uh, till others sign on, and uh, we're going to give it just a couple just a couple more seconds, and then we are going to start this conversation, and we'll receive others as they show up. We'll receive them as they show up.
All right, I tell you what we're going to do. I think it's about that time. Let's have a word of prayer. And uh, we are going to go ahead and get and get started. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you for this amazing day. This is the day you have made and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Thank you, God, for keeping your loving arms around us. Thank you for daily provisions and thank you for the power of your loving presence. God, now we ask your presence uh, continue with us as we share in this conversation. Thank you for Dr. Hudson and for the amazing work that you've done through his hands. And God, now I pray that you be with us, be with those who are sharing with us. And God, through all things, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, it's my distinct pleasure to present uh, to us as our very special guest uh, for this evening. And that is the Reverend Dr. Donald Hudson. He's my friend, he's my brother. I mean, a long time friend. Uh, and, uh, and I'm just honored to share this kind of time with him. And uh, really, uh, in, instead of me uh, giving so many details about him, uh, I, I'm, we, we, we're going to we're going to begin this conversation talking about who the Reverend Dr. Donald Hudson is. So uh, that's what we'll do. So, uh, Dr. Hudson, welcome. And we're so you. delighted to have you here. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for allowing me to uh, share what God has given me. I'm excited and and I just uh, pray and hope that uh, we'll just all blessed as we uh, as we journey together. Thank you, oh, so yeah, man. But now, look, I just want to thank you for your work. I mean, this is uh, the work that you've done here in Life Life Compass is uh, just an amazing work. You know, I got them. I got them right here beside me. So so uh, so we can we can show them the, the both the the uh, book and the workbook. Thank you. And, uh, and and doing something like this takes time. It takes effort. It takes anointing. It takes money. It takes all of that, and so well, I want to thank you uh, for your for your commitment. But now, tell us tell us something about you. Tell us something about who the author is before we go into what you have done. Uh, well, you know, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, now, uh, well, a little bit about myself now is just uh, spending time uh, keeping life real. You know and uh, just trying to live my best life. But um, I've pastored churches for uh, years, and uh, now I'm retired from the local pulpit, but I still do uh, ministry on Sundays through uh, Motivation for Impact Ministries. And so uh, I share uh, messages of motivation uh, each Sunday, uh, 10 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. And uh, uh, done some chaplaincy and and uh, that's what I've been doing and just trying to uh, you know just trying to help people and just you know, you know live you know live life uh, at its best. Yeah, well, uh, I, I see that you're a native of Dallas. Yes, where you are now, which mean you you've uh, as we say come full circle. You know, but yeah. uh, we we know there's a whole lot of other experiences uh, in between that. Tell, tell us about uh, some of your uh, growing up years there in uh, Dallas, Texas. <laughs> well, well, I grew up in a single family home, uh, 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 three siblings, and uh, left, uh, you know, uh, went to school in Dallas, uh, graduated, and then uh, I've done architectural design in Dallas for a little bit uh, before going off to grad school, uh, went to Virginia Union, uh, where I received my master's and my doctorate and uh, started pastoring churches. Been, uh, I was gone from uh, Dallas for about 30 years and then uh, came back, uh, gave up everything uh, just to come back and uh, look after my mom uh, before she passed. And so uh, I just, you know, we grew up in the, we grew up in the, as people say, we grew up in, I grew up in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I grew up in the hood and, um, but God is, um, blessed us with the wonderful mom that uh, raised three crazy, uh, four crazy children. And uh, 
And so uh, God has been good to me. So I just, you know, I just believe that, you know, you know, even when I was younger, I just believe that something uh, that was more into the world uh, out there and that I could do more, didn't know how to do it. But so as uh, God blessed me to continue, I just uh, began to try to follow some type of path. I didn't know what it was called, but I just, <laughs> uh, I just started doing what I was doing with some ups and downs, some bad decisions, some mistakes and some failures. But, you know, but here I am and I believe that uh, God is God is a God of grace. And, uh, yeah. you know, and he keeps us and, and he points us in the right direction. So here I am, you know. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, you, you've come a long way. You've, uh, you've, uh, you, you did your, uh, seminary work and all of that, um, you know, everything from the, uh, masters of arts degree, then your master of divinity degree, um, then uh, your, your doctor of ministry degree. Yes. And uh, so that is that is just commendable. Thank you. Uh, on your part. I mean, and of course, I'm raising all of this because I want uh, our listeners to know who it is Thank that we you. are talking to and who wrote this amazing book, you know, but uh, say, uh, at Virginia Union, right? Is it? Uh, yes. Virginia. T- tell, us, tell us a little bit about that journey. Oh, well. You know, um, before I went to Virginia Union, I was a, uh, uh, I used to be an architectural designer uh, before I, uh, before I just really dove into the calling that God had on my life. Mm -hmm. So I gave up architectural design, um, enrolled at Criswell College and uh, studied uh, biblical studies, apologetics, and uh, Christian counseling. Uh, After that, went on to go to grad school and uh, just basically worked little part-time jobs while my wife worked full-time and uh, <laughs> and I went to school full-time and uh, I started my uh, started passion my first little church in a little place called Goochland, Virginia <laughs> right outside of Richmond a little rural church and after that uh, I was asked to come to Omaha to pastor uh, Bethel Baptist Church uh, stayed there for three years, and then a uh, church called me, 12th Street Baptist Church in Detroit, called me to uh, consider uh, me being the pastor. The Lord moved me to do that. Stayed in uh, Detroit for about for about eight years, and then uh, God moved again uh, that I would pastor uh, Mount Olive Baptist Church in Indianapolis, and then I then after staying there for about five years, I started Yamoja Christian Church, uh, yeah. which I was there for 10 years. And while uh, 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 founding and pastoring Yamoja, uh, God allowed me to start two other churches in Congo, Africa, mm. uh, uh, which we sponsored. And, and then after, um, after my uh, sister passed and after brother passing, uh, mom uh, getting up in age and getting sickly, I, uh, the Lord just moved me uh, as a son uh, to just uh, give up my lifestyle and come back and look after mom. And uh, I did that and did some chaplaincy and palliative care oncology and uh, emergency department. And so uh, and then started a little church here. And after uh, when COVID started, I uh, basically retired from the pulpit and uh, just basically turned that over to the executive pastor. And so uh, here I am, I'm just doing ministry and trying to write, doing some motivation, some, you know, consulting, uh, working with teams, with management. And so uh, that's what I'm doing now. Hey, well, that that, that sounds like a handful, but uh, I think is I think it's one of the, one thing that you left, I, I'm sure it's more than one thing, but one thing that I happen to know that you have left out of all of those many things that you are, are continuing to do, and that is your cooking. Oh, yeah. well, 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 yeah, yeah. I am a, um, I'm a natural self uh, trained gourmet chef, and uh, one of the things I used to do for fun was actually uh, do uh, private private parties. You know, uh, you know, anniversaries, uh, birthday, uh, birthday deals, and. Uh, for, you know, for uh, families, uh, you know, small families, as well as uh, couples. 
And so I trapped my hand at that and uh, got to the point that I started Doc's Cuisine, uh, which is a uh, private chef and little deal that I do. And so that's that's man. sort of my hobby. <laughs> hey, well, it ain't a little deal, man. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's, this is a big deal, it's, but it's great. And uh, it, it's just interesting to know how versatile you are. Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, people get the idea that uh, preaching and pastoring is is uh, uh, so f uh, demanding and consuming yeah. until that that must be all that a preacher pastor can do is right, preach right. and pastor. But uh, you know, with you, we're able to see hey, that there's there's a tremendous amount of gifts that uh, in God's anointed, and so that Thank that's you. a wonderful thing. All right, so let let's talk about this book. Man, life compass. Uh, let's let's put it up on the screen one more time, uh, so that uh, folk can see uh, that book. Life compass: finding your true north. Uh, Dr. Donald R. Hudson. This is an amazing book, and uh, to those of you who are, are are listening and watching, I wanted you to be able to get this book. To get this book, so we want to put up the graphics so that you can see how to order this book so that you could have your own copy. I got mine, I got mine, <laughs> you know? And so I want, and, and have already been blessed through it. And I find myself continuously going back to portions of it because it is just that dynamic and just that exciting. But before we start even talking about it, I wanted you to know how you can get it. You can get the book and the journal workbook uh, because they are currently available for purchase on Amazon and Barnes and Noble of uh, your hard copy, ebook, iBook, Kindle. I mean, it looks like you can get it any way you know possible. So, so be sure that you do that. And you can also get a signed hard copy of the book uh, by directly contacting doc, Dr. Donald Hudson at uh, D R L H. Hudson, D R L H Hudson is two H's in there at yahoo.com or 317-701-0559. You can call in order to uh, make direct contact and get your signed copy. And books can also be pre ordered via Cash App at dollar sign. Donald Hudson, dollar sign, Donald Hudson, and you can also get it through PayPal. So there's ways that you can get this book and make sure that it's yours, that it's in your library and in your hands. And so we wanted to encourage you to be sure that you are doing that. And I'm so grateful for those who are signing <coughs> on with us. And uh, we are we're just honored to see uh, you and we appreciate you so very, very much, uh, those who are on with us at this time. Uh, even though we want to continue to reach out and let uh, everybody know, and I know that others uh, will be coming back, you know, and watching. Some have already told me so that, uh, hey, I can't uh, be available at that time, but I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch it. And I want you to know that you can do that and you can let others know as well that they could come back and get it both on uh facebook live at el branch ministries page and youtube also at el branch Ministries. so all right now we're getting to this book uh Dr. Hudson, you know when it comes to it writing a book man is that's big that's big that's a big thing that's that's something so tell us about your inspiration for even writing a book of this nature. What what moved you? What inspired you to do that? Well, actually, um, this book was this book was probably in the process uh, at least I would say at least about three or four years uh, before I even put you know the pen in my hand or start uh, uh, just doing something on the computer. And so, uh, and, and, and I found myself about 
I'd say probably about four years ago, just with this with this compass thing uh, in my head. I was I was uh, driving one day, and I heard somebody say that uh, that many of us are are not living according to our compass, and that just kind of rung a bell. And so what I started doing. Uh, was just jotting down different notes, whether it was just some scraps of paper and um, uh, just, you know, uh, you know, you're not going to be in restaurants and just take a napkin and just start writing little stuff down. Um, and, you know, and so it was in the making. When um, I, mean, I came back uh, to look after my mom, I uh, just kind of laid it off. And then, um, and then when COVID happened, um, I realized that a lot of people had to regroup. A lot of people had to redefine themselves, and that and that life has shifted for all of us. And so God pressed upon me uh, to start putting this book together. Now, you know, to be totally honest, I was reluctant to write it. You know, and I was reluctant because I knew that um, that what God was calling me to do was actually to talk about to talk about my story and and i didn't really want to talk about my story mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um you know because i really you know uh sometimes when you start really looking at your story um there's some things you don't like and there's some things that you do like and so god pressured upon me and i just and i just said to god one day um if you you know if you you know if you work with me to write it i bow to write it uh, because when I look back at my story, and I realize that my story is no different than the average Joe. The, the, the only difference with our stories is that it happens on different days to different people in dis different places. But if we all go back to it and, and look at ourselves, our story is not that much different, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, God impressed upon me that... Um, that if that if I was, you know, that if I was in the place where I was, uh, there had to be other people that was going through the same thing. And we needed and we needed answers. You know, we needed uh, we needed, you know, we needed something to let us know that we all right, you know, and, you know, and that God loves us and that we got something in us that uh, that can help change the lives of others. And so uh, so I trusted God to write it. And so. Um, I would, you know, I would get up uh, sometimes at five thirty in the morning, and I start writing, and I would write for hours, and then I would go work in uh, as a chaplain in emergency, and come back home and write a couple more uh, things, go to sleep, wake back up, and do the same thing. So I literally was writing like uh, seven days a week, mm. and 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 I made it my goal that once I started writing it, that I wanted to finish the book with. Uh, probably a little bit less than a year or about a year. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I met my goal. Yeah. Well, yeah. wow. And this, you know, you, you mentioned about the compass, but this, this whole idea of finding your true North, tell us a little more about, about that. Well, well, the, uh, what true North is a metaphor for your destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, that very destiny that we are born for and not only born for, but we are also equipped to reach it, you know? And so, um, you know, so this whole compass thing, uh, you know, when it came to me and that true North came and, um, and, and God just placed upon my heart, say, this represents your destiny because North is always up. You don't want to mm -hmm. go south. Mm -hmm. North is always up. <laughs> And so, um, and, you know, and so when I think about um, the whole magnetic pull, even in, you know, you know, even in the world, even in nature, everything, you know, everything points up, everything points to north. And, it, you know, you know, you know, it's interesting that uh, even plants actually uh, grow toward its source of power, which is the sun. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and so the same way with us, when we was created, we was created with the inner compass, mm -hmm. but also that inner compass 
actually operates by what I call the, the magnetic pull. And that magnetic pull is that which drives us, that which continually calls us. And, and you know, and for me, my, my magnetic pull is God. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so because, because God is my source, he's constantly uh, pulling me. He's constantly pulling you. He's constantly pulling all of us in the, the in the des- toward the destiny for which we for which we've been created, mm-hmm. you know. And, and and so my thing is that when we wake up every morning, uh, we should be pointed to a certain direction, and that is north. You you know, God wants us to go up, and we should want mm-hmm. ourselves to go up. And so that's what that magnetic pull is. That you know that that one thing that continues to call your name. That's, you know, that's something that, you know, even when you, you know, even, you know, even when you sleep, that's in your subconscious. Wow. You know, wow. You know when you think about it, it, it's that thing that makes you feel good, even if you're not there yet. Mm-hmm. It just makes you, you know, it makes you feel that uh, sense of joy, comfortability, uh, belonging. You know, and so that's what that magnetic pull is. Uh, you know, that's, you know, and so that magnetic magnetic pull is constantly pulling us to the very best life God wants us to have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we all got a destiny, whether we mm-hmm. recognize it or not. Wow, that is that is. Uh, I mean, that's something, and and of course that is worth uh, worth uh, writing about. It's worth reading about. Is worth talking about. Yes, indeed, it is, and that does it. Now, are uh, you, you, um, in the book? You know, you al- you allude to uh, the fact. I mean, you you said it in your own way, but uh, it came out like this: that uh, your life kind of began to fall apart. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. Uh, you know. What 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 are you sharing uh, with? Well, with well, 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 number one, this this book is not a um, a uh, book written from a you know it's not a rags to riches piece. You know, a lot of times when books are written, it um, it you know, you know sometimes they you know books like this self help books are sometimes written. Uh, where people are, you know, uh, up or down somewhere in some pit. Mm-hmm. This book, this book was really written, you know, you know, you know, started in a highlight of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, you had the bells and whistles, you had a good life. But even though I had a good life, there was still something missing, mm-hmm. you know. And the collapse, and you know, and the collapse of which I speak of was wasn't an it wasn't exterior, it was actually interior. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, on the outside, one one could look at me and say, "Boy, you know, he's doing well, he's successful, and all of that." But you know, but on the inside, I was crashing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, and the you know, but I did it in silence. You know, I did it in silence because um, I didn't. I didn't want anybody to know that um, that the person that they had per- perceived to be successful was actually crashing. Mm-hmm. And that and that happens to and that happens to a lot of us. You'll be surprised oh, yeah. at how many people are crashing. Now, now, now the collapse wasn't uh, about anything crazy. It was, it was, it was really about that there was a void in me, and all the things I was doing. There was still something missing, and it, 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 you know, was really gnawing at me, you know. And so I just got to that point that, like, I'm, you know, that I begin to ask, ask the question, now, you know, what am I doing? Why am I here? You know, and and you know, and, and finally, and finally. Uh, Dr. Branch, I uh, I hit a wall, you know, and I hit a wall with everything, with all the bells and whistles. I hit a wall, and I never and I never will forget this day that I was sitting down, had this look on my face, and my wife asked me what was wrong, you know, and I asked her this question. I said, I said I don't I I, I said I said what do you do 
when you have everything going, but you don't know if you still want to live, mm -hmm. you know, and that was that brick wall. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and so I discovered then that part of that was due to the fact that even though I was going in a direction, it was not necessarily the, the direction that I needed to be going in at that time. Because see, mm -hmm. see what we can do sometimes, we can get so caught up in, uh, in careers. We can get so caught up in ministries that, that, that we, you know, that I, you know, that who we are is defined by those things. Mm -hmm. and, and, but, but at the same time, even though you are, you know, you're doing all of this, you're traveling, you know, they're calling your name, you got the lights, you know, you got the cameras and you got the action. But, but when all of that is over, then the question is, what are you doing then? When the lights go out, when the mics are cut off and when the crowd dissipates, yeah. how do you feel? How are you feeling then? You know, now what do you know? You know, you know, are you being defined? by the lights or you've been defined by people calling your name or you've been defined by the crowd you know and and, and the, which i call outside props what mm -hmm. life compass is about and finding your true north is finding that place in your life where you wake up every morning and it's all right to have all the stuff but what happens if you don't have it will yeah. you will, will will you know how will you measure yourself then you know, how, how how do you how do you perceive yourself when 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 it's only you who's who's on the field and it's only you in the bleachers and you're your own cheerleader? Mm, 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 mm. What do you do then? Well, man, so, you you look you talk you talking to people now. You talking to I know you're talking to me and you're talking to to others as well. I mean that 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 helps us where we live. I mean, this is the reason, my brothers and sisters, that I think, you know, you just really need to get this book. You know, we're going to put it up again so that you can see it and understand what's available to you. Life Compass, Finding Your True North by Dr. Donald R. Hudson. And uh, there's ways that you can get it. And I want you to uh, we're going to run that across the screen now so that you can see what that is again. We want you to know that you can get this book. You can have it, uh, the signed hard copies, and it's going across the screen right now. Also available by directly contacting Dr. Donald Hudson at D-R-L-H-H-U-D-S-O-N. Dr. L-H-H. Hudson at yahoo.com. And now you can uh, do that. You can call. You can also pre order your books, you know, via Cash App at dollar sign uh, Donald Hudson. And you can also do it through PayPal. Listen, I, I encourage you. Uh, uh, how does um, uh, the apostle say, say I beseech you <laughs> to get to get your copy of this amazing amazing book. Uh, back to you, Dr. Hudson. You know, I, I uh, in my reading of uh, your book, I mean, I just really looked at how, you know, because uh, I guess I'm one of those who also have a, um, um, should we say, short attention span? You know, and <laughs> I mean, well, I and, and I, yeah, I'm saying it's, it, it, I don't even claim all fault for that because we, this is where we live in. But the, but the fact of the matter is just that, you know, we, you know, uh, you know, it, it takes, it takes something serious to, to hold us, but the way you have structured your book so that you could, I mean, you could read it in bite-sized pieces. I mean, that I said, that, this is the kind of book I like to read, you know, this and then and and you speak directly to the subject matter and you go after it with um, such precision as well as passion and uh, 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 and knowledge. And you tap into 
uh, all of these amazing uh, resources, quotes, and other uh, 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 writings and all of that. Um, you, you know, I mean, share, share with us something about just how uh, uh, you chose to structure this amazing book. Well, you know, I structured it from, you know, from my story, you know, and, 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 and what I, you know, and what I um, have learned from other people and experience from other people. And so um, as I, you know, as I started writing and as I started praying about how, um, uh, I, you know, I would put this book together, you know, it was really God that led me to do it, you know, but, I, but, 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 but I tried to write it from, not just from my perspective, but to write it from the perspective of people who would read it from the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and not, you know, you know, and being uh, empathetic to uh, the, you know, the pains uh, that people go through every day, you know, and so I wanted to, you know, so I uh, wrote it in a way that, uh, that, you know, that it doesn't matter what your education is, mm -hmm. you know, that you can, you know, that you can read this book and you can learn from it. Um, you know, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, I got people who got the book in their uh, in their middle twenties who's reading the book now. Uh, one of the most uh, fascinating things uh, is that uh, um, one of my mother's friends, uh, a matter of fact, one of her best friends, who's now uh, about ninety years old. She's about 90, 91. Uh, My you know my sister uh, bought her a copy of the book. And I get this call from her, and, and, and you know, and she called me Don, and uh, and said, "Hey, Don, I got your book." And I said, oh, "Okay." And she said, uh, "Matter of fact, I'm, um, I'm I'm at the hospital. When I go home today, I'm gonna finish reading." And I said, "Well, oh, okay. Well, I'm thinking, well, well you know, well, she's 90 and 91, so uh, <laughs> that means that she probably read about uh, two pages and put it down." And I asked her, I said, "Well." I said, well, how much more do you got to read? She said, well I, I, well, I got about, I got about six more pages that I'm going to read, you know? And she said, and thank you for helping me to know that, uh, that I still have a destiny, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so, and, you know, and so uh, I guess I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. And that was to connect to everybody with, you know, with real, you know, not with theory, mm -hmm. but, you know, you know, but with truth to power. You know where I can connect to everybody, and they could, you know, that they can look at uh, themselves in the pages of this book and understand that there is great hope, you know, and that they can, you know, that they can press through anything that they've been in, you know, and they can accomplish anything they want to accomplish and meet, you know, and reach their destiny. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, so I just, I just try to write it from the pools of my own experience while understanding that other people have similar experience and, and, and people are going through something and we need some and we need something that is not fictional. Yeah. That will, you know, that will, you know, that will really help us. Yeah. Yeah. Well that is that is that is great. Well, you know, uh I mean I, I I'm I'm just amazed and you know just uh you know your book just uh, provides uh, you know, encouragement and and uh, you know and and you know I I don't even want anybody listening to think that I'm just saying things and we are holding this conversation just because you're my friend you know you are my friend you're my brother you and we're longtime friends you know uh, connected you know we've preached for each other and we have you know uh been through uh similar experiences in ministry and all that kind of thing that's one thing and that's in this category over here because uh i could just pat you on the back and say hey man you know great job i'm doing this i'm saying this because uh you have done a great job with this book thank you. Thank you. because i think that this book will bless the lives of people. That's why I wanted to have this conversation and be a part of this because it is just truly a great work from someone 
who we can identify with. There's somebody that's, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, the prophet Ezekiel said, I sat where they sat, you know, <laughs> and so it's uh, who, who have sat among us and uh, that we can touch and feel and understand uh, as you as you speak. And I mean, I just appreciate, you know, your vulnerability, your transparency, you know, in it and all of the rest. And but but now I, I do want you to highlight even more. So we, we we touched on it, but I do want you to highlight even more so on this uh thing of finding your true north. Uh, you know, as you as you describe, you know, that that's just your destiny. Uh, but you share a lot of other things about the idea of the true north. So uh, uh, give, give, a, give us a little bit more on that. Well, well, again, uh, uh, our true north is, you know, again, our destiny. But we find it, you know, you know we find it by, um, you know, by doing a deep search within ourselves. If, if we dare uh, take that dive. You know, because be you know because as the you know uh, you know like the subtitles of the book is admitting your past and accepting it, mm -hmm. you know uh, accepting your presence and owning it and acknowledging your future and going for it. Mm -hmm. So so um, finding finding your true north takes you to be intentional and daring enough to go back. And, and, and look at how everything that has happened in your life, be it negative or positive, has been a part of God's providential plan, where he weaves all of your experiences together to get you to a certain point. Now, when you start talking about um, going back and looking at your past, it gets scary, you know? You know? And so usually when we talk about, um, looking at our past mm -hmm. we always we always run to the negative now our past is you know there's some negative yeah. things that, yeah. you know but one of the things i talk about in this book is that when you go back to your past you're not just going to you know don't just go back and look at the negative things but look at those positive things none of us none of us are all bad yeah I mean, I mean, you go back in your life, you're going to see some failures, but you're also going to see some accomplishments. Yes, yes. You're going to see some great things that you have done. Yeah, you'll go back and you'll see, oh, man, I made a crazy decision. But you're also going to look at yourself and say, you know what? I also made some good decisions. You know, and so and so the first step is that if you're going to find your true north, you got to go back and admit who you are. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, when I talk about it, admitting who you are, I'm not talking about putting putting where you've been on Facebook. You know, I'm not talking about telling the world. I'm talking about you got to be honest with yourself. Yes, yes. You know, you know, and you know, and it's all right. <laughs> you know, you got you know, you know, you know. See, you got to be all right with your past because because your past is actually going to be the propellers. Mm -hmm. That is going to propel you to to your destiny. That's how you got here. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that's you know that's why you are where you are. You know, and so the first step of finding your true north is you know is figuring out what is my departure point. Mm -hmm. Well, your departure point is your past. Now, how you now, now now how you work that is up to you. And then you know then the second thing is this accepting your present. You know you know uh, accepting your present. And owning it, you know. See, you will never get to your destiny. You'll never get to the to the next level in your life until you accept mm -hmm. where you are. Yeah. Where you know, you know, and you know, you know, where are you now? And then not only where are you now, but who are you now? Yeah. Be because over a period of time, we we have evolved into someone other than who we used to be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And so what we got to do is own it. You got to own your story now, you know, and you, and you know, and you know, because then when you start owning your present, what you're going to do, you're going to discover 
uh, that, that there are some things that you don't like anymore. There are some things that you don't even want to do anymore, you know, but there's also some things that you, you that you want now, mm -hmm. you know, and some things that you no longer fit and some things that fit you now, you know, and, you know, and so that's the second step. You got to own who you are, you know, now, now owning who you are cannot be, you know, uh, and accepting who you are cannot be predicated by the perception of others. Right. Wow. wow. And, see, that's the, and see, that's the biggest issue with us. This is why so many of us are off our path. Because, because we're taking paths that, you know, that other people say, well, this is what you're supposed to be, this is what you're supposed to be. And then we spend all of our time trying to trying to fit into this box that somebody else built for us. And, and, so, and so many of us right now, oh, you may have a great career, but do you feel good? Do you feel good about yourself? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know, who, you know, who are you now? Since, mm -hmm. you know, since then, <laughs> you know, right. you know, who are you? And so, and so the second step is accepting um, where you are and who you are now. And then the third step is, is to admit where you want to go and knowledge where you want to go. Where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, when I talk about where you want to go, it may have something to do with a career, but I'm not necessarily talking about a career. I'm talking about what about the essence of your life? What type of life do you want to live now on? Who do you want to be from now on? And, you know, and, you know, and can you be that person? Can you, can, can you grow into your essence? If, if the props was taken away right now, Listen, mm -hmm. so many of us are so lost and we're not so much lost in the world, but so many of us are so lost. We're lost within ourselves to the point that that for many of us, if we tapped ourselves on the back, will we even recognize who we are? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, wow. and so those are three steps of getting to your true law and owning it and pressing and being intentional about about knowing where you want to go and going for it. Because it's not going to happen by luck or happenstance. Yeah. What? What is? What, let's see. You, you, you did a chapter that talked about change. You, I think under under intentional change. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, I mean, <laughs> this whole idea of uh, where we need change. I mean, uh, 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 human nature pushes back against change, and we, of course, think that everything and everybody needs to change except us. Uh, right. but, but, uh, uh, what, what do we do then when we come to the, the point that we really do need to change some things about ourselves? We got to accept it. We got to, mm -hmm. you know, we got to be true to ourselves and get, you know, and get out of this fiction out of our minds. And we got to, and, and we got to finally take the mask off, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you know, many times we hear people say, well, you gotta, you know, come from behind the mask. Well, yeah. well, the first the first person that you need to take the mask off with is yourself. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, and, and realize, hey, I got to make some changes, you know, and, and making those changes doesn't mean that there's something necessarily bad. It's just saying that you have gotten to a point that what worked for you is no longer working. Yeah, there you go. You know, yeah. that you know, only, you know, you no longer fit that it don't fit you. Right. You know, and, you know, and so you change. It's almost like, you know, it's almost like a person who, uh, it's almost like a person who lose weight or gain weight. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, I remember at one point, uh, you know, I was, you know, I was beginning to gain weight, you know, and, uh, you know, because I was eating the wrong stuff and all that stuff. And, you know, and I, you know, and I had some suits that, that I just loved. And I, you know, and I remember, and I remember one day I said, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, this is one of my best suits and it was time for me to preach. And, and man, I put that suit on and I, you know, and I, uh, and I played mind games with myself uh, <laughs> that, you know, that I was all right. <laughs> uh, you know, and, you know, and I'm in the midst of a sermon and, 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 you know, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, wow, why am I feeling like this? You know, that, that other voice is talking to me like, why are we feeling like this? Well, that was because I, I you know, I don't put myself in something that no longer fit. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you know, and you know, and so it's the same way with life. You got to figure out what doesn't fit you, and you got to deliberately make up in your mind, I'm going to change this. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, and it's better to 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 make a deliberate and intentional change versus being forced to a change. You know, and even if you are forced to a change, that's all right. Just realize that you need change. Mm -hmm. And accept it and just change some things because all of us can change some things about ourselves, whether it's a mindset or habits or just routines, we can change some stuff and we got to, you know, and so depending on what type of life you really want to live, if you want to be compass driven, if you want to really get to that place where God has designed for you to be, uh, then you have to make up your mind. I'm going to change. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make a shift because life is going to shift. And you got to accept it. Mm -hmm. And it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, well, the thing is, is if uh, if, we go, if we're going to improve our lives, some things, some decisions we just have to make and yeah. uh, we have to take personal responsibility for. And I think that your book, you know, really does uh, help us in that regard. Now, we're going to put it up one more time. A Life Compass, Finding Your True north and you know listen brothers and sisters if you um if you are interested in fulfilling your god appointed destiny uh then this book is for you and uh and i i am one to declare that it's an it's a uh it's not difficult to read you can you can, i mean it's almost like once you start you aren't going to hardly be able to put it down uh, but and you can get through this. You can take in uh, what Dr. Hudson has shared. I really do believe that it's a move of God on his part. And uh, and uh, we, we put up uh, the book, Life Compass, Finding the Truth North, but also there's the workbook. There's the journal workbook that goes right along with it. And I'm going to tell you, this workbook gives gives us an opportunity to actually work our way uh, to our true north and to and to chart the course. It's <laughs> it, uh, so so Dr. Hester, tell me a little bit about the workbook that accompanies it as well. Uh, you know, we're getting down to our final moments and I, I just want them to know that there's a workbook too and that uh, it's a part of the it can be a part of the package. Yeah. Well, well, the workbook is actually written to coincide with mm -hmm. every chapter in the book. Now, in the, you know, now in the at the end of uh, each piece in the book, you see that I have uh, what I call compass prompts. Mm -hmm. But the workbook is more in detail, and so in the workbook, I uh, you know I composed it to. Um, to do, you know, uh, there's a highlight from each chapter. But then I also uh, give you a particular exercise mm -hmm. that you can do. But I also give you the example of the exercise. And so you can actually uh, take the workbook and you can just work through it. I give you examples. I walk you through it. And, and, and you know, and it, because it's a journal workbook and I've actually given you uh, page uh, about three pages after each exercise that you can write your journal notes, you know, because you can take the workbook, you know, as you continue to follow your compass uh, path, because uh, life compassing is a continuum. It's a lifestyle. And so you can actually go back to this workbook and, and let's say, for instance, if you get off track. Mm -hmm. Well, you can go back to this workbook and find out where you got off track at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and you can, you know, and so in the workbook, I challenge you to write out your own compass statement. I show you how to do that. You know, I show you how to compose your own strategy uh, in order to follow the path of your inner compass and get to the very best that God has for you because he has some great things available for you. You know, you, 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 you know, you're so unique. You're so awesome. You know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you all of that, you know, I used to, I used to say, well, you ain't all that in a bag of chips. Well, let me tell you tonight, you all of that and a bag of chips and a leader pop. 
you know, I mean, you all of that. You are so unique. You're so gifted. And, you know, and, and you know, and I know that 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 the creator want you to live your very best life and you can get there. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care where you are. You have the ability uh, to just live your best life under any circumstances. That's not saying you're not going to have any pain. I'm not going to say you're not going to have any disappointments, uh, anything like that, but you can still live your best life. And so the workbook is composed to help you um, actually com compose your own path. Yeah. Wow. Look, the journal and workbook are currently available for purchase. And listen, uh, I'm urging you, challenging you, uh, beseeching you to get a copy of this book. You can purchase it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can also make direct contact with Dr. Hudson so that you can get your copy of this book. You know, I'm grateful for all of you who are on. Look at this list of amazing people who are on, Minister May Alexander, uh, also Sandra Freeman. Minister Sandra Freeman is on. Uh, Bill Moss Jr. is on. Not only is he on and sharing, but he's uh, put right in the comment section, I just bought mine. And so, <laughs> yeah, so that that is great. Darlene Massey is here. Pastor John Duckworth is, is on as well. And we're grateful for uh, Dr. Jacqueline Nelson, Pastor Richard White is on, Joanne Pounds is on, uh, Andrea Down Harrison uh, is on, and also uh, Sister Linnell is on, Sandra Cobb, Pastor James Minnick, uh, uh, First Lady Roxanne Jefferson is on, and we are, Tierra Young is on uh deborah carpenter and darlene massey uh wow the list just goes on and on uh dr wallace mills is on and he shares that uh how rich this experience is jacqueline berry is on as well a longtime friend uh also daryl brown uh katherine sanders uh, I mean, and and it just goes on and on. Sarita Hardy, uh, Pastor Lamar Tab is on. I already uh, mentioned that Dr. Uh, uh, Pastor Derek Arnold out of uh, Toledo, Ohio is on. Uh, it's just uh, Edith Peters, Mary White. I mean, the list goes on. Just, and and I, I just wanted to uh, mention that, that we, we're going to have about one one minute and I hope everybody have gotten the information that you need in order to order your copy of this book, Life Compass, Finding Your True North. But I want Dr. Hudson to have a final word uh, before we adjourn for the evening. But I wanted to mention you so that I could just appreciate you and thank you for coming and sharing. And I know that you'll be sharing with others and uh, there are more who are going to be coming back to YouTube and to Facebook Live at the EL Branch Ministries page uh, to uh, view this conversation, and uh, we're going to keep it going. But, but Dr. Hudson, uh, again, thank you for allowing the Lord to use you in such a powerful way to give us this work. So, give us some final words, and then uh, we'll have to uh, uh, call it done for the evening. Right. Well, well, I just want to thank all of you. Uh, for sharing tonight. I want to definitely thank uh, Dr. Branch for this opportunity uh, to share with you guys. And, 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 and I just want to encourage you uh, to live your best life. You know, it's, uh, you know, you know, navigate, you know, navigate your life to the point that you change your impossible to I'm possible. Wow. Because there's so much in you, you're possible, man. There's so many possibilities in you and you can and you can get that as you follow your uh life compass and i hope that you'll connect with me because i would love to share more with you uh you know even if it's on a personal basis or uh if you need for me to talk to a group uh if you guys hit me up i would love for you to be a partner with me on this life compass journey and all i can say i see you at the top 
<laughs> well, blessings on you, Dr. Hassan. And my brothers and sisters, you better know there's more coming. We're going, we're already talking about having an online workshop uh, that Dr. Hudson would be leading uh, through EL Branch Ministries along with his own ministry. Uh, and uh, we are going to be partnering together and we are going to have a workshop in which we can go into these books and not only work these ideas, but apply them to our lives. So we look forward to it. Thank you so much, Dr. Hudson. And thank, thank all you, of you for sharing. And may God continue to bless you all and keep you. And uh, we look forward to talking to you soon. And we also looking to share in Bible Talks on this Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, right here at EO Branch Ministries of Facebook and YouTube. Blessings on each of you. God bless you. Peace.